All right, we've got more with Simon Grimm. We also know him as Simon Gotch from his WWE NXT. Now he's an MLW. He's here at Ronin Pro. He's been at Blueprint Pro. He's been at Oregon. He's been all around the country. Freelance for Chicago. I've been up to Canada for Alpha One and C4, which I, I like. Uh, I like Canadian wrestling promotions because they all sound like dietary supplements. <laughs> and because I'm a Cellucor guy, as you might be able to tell, Cellucor, uh, wonderful products, and C4 is their pre-workout. So. I, uh, that fits in nicely when you go C4. to Canada. I was on C4 when I wrestled for C4, so I had that <laughs> energy. Wrestled uh, uh, Mad Angels, wonderful match. You can find on Powerbomb TV, actually. Nice. Sports growing up. So what was it for you? Tell us where you grew up, and then your athletic background. I, I actually grew up in Santa Rosa, California, which is about an hour north of San Francisco. Uh, if you're not familiar with the area, it was where they had that really bad wildfire, actually, uh, last September. Um, uh, fun fact, the last house I lived in in Santa Rosa actually burned down. Wow. I, no, none of my family not, lived there. Not really a fun fact. Oh, but, <laughs> but that whole neighborhood was wow. like completely oh. decimated by the fire. Like a third of the city burned. It was pretty bad. Um, and the, the area actually was at 100% uh, occupancy as was because uh, it's been an ongoing problem of gentrification in Sonoma County where you had people who were working in Silicon Valley and San Francisco who were making good money but they couldn't afford to live in San Francisco. So they'd drive an hour, move to a place like Santa Rosa, and it drove all the... Uh, the rent and the uh, property value sky high. So there's a point actually right before this happened where already there was 100% occupancy. You could not rent, you could not buy, you could only build in Sonoma County. There was nothing in either in either uh, format. Um, obviously now that's a little different because there's so much land that was uh, taken over by the fire. Um, my athletic background actually was in martial arts. Uh, when I was about 13 years old, I started studying Shotokan Karate. Um, then I expanded into uh, Lanfu Kempo, which was sort of a proto MMA. The, the, the basis for the style was obviously traditional American Kempo Karate, but there were some things that were added into the training, like boxing, grappling, uh, weapons training, uh, as well as doing some Seven Star Mantis Kung Fu, as well as a bit of Judo, um, which actually helped a lot for wrestling because I was really I was used to getting hit and thrown around. What did you want to do with that? So you're training in that, you end up getting into pro wrestling. But was there something else that you wanted to do, or is it more just for protection and just I, things like that, or, I just or even it. for cardio and things I, like that? Too. I honestly just enjoyed it. Um, it was something I was fascinated by, and I liked doing it. It was fun. Um, that's kind of how I make a lot of decisions in my life: is if I'm having fun or not. Uh, so I was having fun doing it, and I enjoyed it a lot. And I had the and uh, actually, when I uh, initially my, my thought was I was going to my goal was to sort of you know get my black belt, teach karate on the side. And then I was thinking, oh, I'll just get a, a solid job, like work as an EMT or something, because you know you can go get your certification through it at most universities or uh, community colleges, relatively inexpensively. I mean, by college standards, anyway, it's expensive. Yeah, well, yeah. But uh, but what wound up happening was right before, right after I graduated high school, I was 18 years or I was 17 years old actually. Um, ECW was going to be doing the Heat Wave 2000 pay per view from uh, Grand Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles, which is uh, actually one of the original territories was Los Angeles territory, and they ran out of the Olympic. Uh, Old Jimmy Lennon, ring announcer, mm -hmm. legendary. Now his son's doing a lot of boxing and all. Excellent. Yeah. I, I'm still waiting for ju something to finally kill Gene LaBelle, but I'm thinking it's probably going to be... Judo Gene LaBelle, holy Probably, probably going to be the son going supernova is the only thing that can kill that man. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Did you have any interactions with Judo Gene LaBelle? No, I had never gotten to meet him. Wow. I'm very sad. No, you know what? I met him one time when I was like 15. Um, I, just, I think I got my photo taken with him. I, I have probably have that picture somewhere that I haven't... And he was, you know, he was already 95 then. So, but, uh, yeah, who knows how old he is? I know, right? He's 200 years old. He, 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 he's like he's, he's like reverse dog years. He just keeps aging more and more. But uh, uh, well, you were gonna be an EMT. Oh, oh yeah, I was gonna be an EMT. But um, I decided, me and my brother decided we we're gonna drive down to see the show. Um, my car died halfway through. I blew the soft plug and cracked the engine gasket. We had to hop a Greyhound. I broke my foot somehow. We go to the show. And, you know, we're watching it, watching, watching it. This is when Rob Van Dam was having his feud with Scotty Riggs. And he promised he was going to put Scotty away with, the Van with this new move called Van Terminator. And when I saw that, there was this huge pop. I looked around and I just went, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I'd seen the film Beyond the Mat earlier that year. And I went to wrestling school in Hayward, California. I didn't know exactly where that was, but I knew it was in the Bay Area. So I started looking into that. And a year later, I started out training. How did you get your big break then and end up with WWE? <laughs> well... 12 years of cutting my teeth and getting lucky. That's literally how I got it. Um, I uh, was turning 30 and I kind of just sort of threw up my hands and asked William Regal when I have to get signed because they were always very positive about my work but never so positive that I got a tryout. Um, I'm a relatively normal sized guy. I'm 6'1", uh, and 
generally my weight sits between you know 210 and 230 depending on you know how I'm eating and how I'm doing how I'm working out um, and I had the mustache already and he looked at me and he went, uh, go to Ring of Honor get some TV experience I said I've tried they won't talk to me I said uh uh, try, uh, I don't know, you know, I've already talked to Evolve, Gabe won't, again, he always says he doesn't have a spot for me, and he finally looked at me for a second and went, look like one of those old-timey strongmen, make a video, send it in. I did that, and uh, that was what got me in my tryout. During my tryout, they liked my stuff, uh, I popped John Cena with my promo, and after that, it was, you know, the short, or that's the shortest version of the story. Um, after that, I got uh, signed to a contract. The Bog Villains, just a different, old-school, unique feel Whose idea was it? Ring gear for you, the old footage that they used. Where did the, all this come from? A lot of that started with it was sort of stuff I was already doing. Um, the, the promo video is still out there somewhere on the internet. Um, I started, uh, I wore the ring gear already, the single strap singlet and everything. Um, I had to update it a bit when I got to WWE just because it was like, well, I had money now, I could justify getting like nicer gear. Um, it was like just a straight off the rack singlet that had been adjusted and then uh, some, a belt and cuffs that were made fairly cheaply. Um, but, uh, what was it, um, I had already kind of done that and they liked it, and uh, Aiden English had done something similar before with the Lincoln Fight Club with a guy named uh, Max Brower, uh, he wrestled as uh, Mickey Keegan. Uh, he wound up having to retire because of a neck injury. Um, but uh, Triple H liked the idea, he thought me and English would make a good tag team, so that was kind of where it came from. Do you know how they got the musical footage and all that put together? That was just something they did, they had, and you guys came out? That was Ryan Katz. Uh, Ryan Katz, who does production stuff for WWE. You might know him as GQ Money from XPW, as well as uh, Fabian Kalen from uh, Wrestling Society X. Katz is a genius, and uh, he understood the gimmick immediately, and he loved it and wanted to do it. So he put that together himself, and he did that for us, and I, was really, I loved that guy to death. Great guy, Ryan Katz. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Ryan's like a jack of all trades, too. There's so many things he could do. All right, we'll wrap this up. You mentioned Silicon Valley, so I'm just wondering for you, and you mentioned San Francisco and the Bay Area. Golden State Warriors? I don't like any sport other than professional wrestling, and I can watch some MMA, but I... So I saw a stand-up comedian, actually. I'll, I'll throw this in here. Uh, someone posted this on like Facebook or something. I don't remember where I saw it. But he was talking about he loves pro wrestling, and his, fans, his, his friends were like, oh, how can you watch that stuff? You gotta watch LeBron, he's changing the game. And he's like, oh, how's he changing the game? By scoring slightly more points than the last guy who scored the most points ever? Like, and they're like, oh, but it's scripted. He goes, yeah, well, you know what? Who won the uh, NBA Finals last year? I can tell you, it was either Golden State Warriors or it was the Utah Jazz, right? You know who won the main event of WrestleMania? A guy that wasn't even in the match. It's like, that's a lot more unpredictable. It makes it a valid point. Like, you, in, 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 in any sport, you know who's gonna win, you know who's gonna lose sooner or later. Wrestling, it's always a guess. Simon social media. Oh, you can find me on uh, Twitter at Devious Journey. There's a there's a linguistic joke in there if you uh, want to look up the word devious in the dictionary. Uh, you can also still find me at GotStyleWWE on Instagram uh, because Instagram won't let me change my name. Or you can uh, find my wonderful array of T-shirts over at Pro Wrestling Tees slash or dot com slash Simon Says. Um, I'm also on Facebook at Devious Journey. And uh, yeah, and just find me at your local indie wrestling show, being a handsome individual and polite to people. Always love the mustache. Thank you, Simon. Thank you.